happy you've joined us for the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, everyone. It's Megan Mozak, and it's a pleasure to be back in the studio with financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're both with the Retirement Education Foundation. If you're a regular listener to our program, you know that the foundation, they sponsor courses all throughout the year at major universities, helping you get retirement confidence. You gain that by attending these courses, which are really meant to be deep dives. These are almost like master's level courses. And wherever you're listening today, we've got local options for you to attend. We're going to be telling you where those locations are, telling you how to get a front row seat. That's coming up soon. And we have a terrific show lined up for you today. We want to talk to you today on the program about why some people don't do what they know they need to do when they need to do it. Now, Kirk and Paul, before we dive in, it sounds a little bit like my teenagers, to be honest. <laughs> well, <laughs> Megan, I, I, th- I think if we're being honest, it sounds like a lot of us men do, right? <laughs> I mean, if we're being serious. I, you know, I, I know Paul, Paul put together this content for this show, and I, I, I really think it was something that was triggered in our last show where we, Paul was explaining how difficult it is for us to do these shows and how frustrated we get. And, and I, I, I'm sure our listeners who have been listening to us for a long time can hear the passion almost pleading with people, why won't you go to an eight-hour advanced retirement education course being hosted by a charity at one of the major universities. Like, what is holding you back from doing this? So Paul said, I'm just putting a show together to talk about why won't people ask for help or go seek help or at least go get the education. And, and, And Paul, to be fair, I think some of the most recent market events over the last 10 years may are may be contributing to some some of the reasons why people aren't aren't coming to this class because they think it's going to be that simple and we're going to have another decade like we had last decade and that they're going to be able to use the same strategies that helped really accumulate some significant wealth they think that's going to work in retirement maybe that has something to do with and i think there's other things that i know you want to talk about paul yeah i mean i think regardless of the reason and we're, we're going to get into all of them at the end of the day, it's sad and it's problematic, and and at the end of the day, people suffer because of it. If you you know if you don't ask for help when you need it, it causes problems. I mean, it, it's no different than you know if you're sick, you don't ask for help. It, it you know it, it affects your health. Or if you're sad and you don't ask for help, but it, it affects you, right? If you if you have marital problems, you don't ask for help. Your marriage dissolves, right? It's the same with retirement planning. If you don't get help, or at least get educated, become knowledgeable. The consequences are severe. We're going to talk about them. But yeah, this this is triggered by the fact that we just feel like we're pulling our hair out sometimes, right? To get people to come to a class just to get educated so you make good decisions. Know, sometimes it's just frustrating. And we're going to talk about the whys today. Well, Paul, here's the deal. We'll get to the whys. But the end result is, and, and, and I want to be clear who we're talking to. We're talking to the person that's got, you know, 700000 to 10, maybe even $20 million. These people have had some success financially. And they. the reality is if they don't really learn how to be able to spend freely in retirement, the end result will be they will work longer than they need to. Once they retire, they will spend less than they can. They will way underspend what they otherwise should be spending if they just had this knowledge. They're going to pay more taxes and live retirement with more anxiety and fear. Every time there's a short, short-term market event, they are going to reduce and change their spending habits. And these are avoidable and these are facts. Facts. We back it up. We'll make a $2,000 donation or whatever charity you want. If you attend this course and you don't retire earlier, spend more, pay less in taxes and have more freedom. It's eight hours of advanced education. They're held at most of the major universities in our areas. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and you can attend. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or call 800-240-8981. You know, Kirk, it's it's interesting. Part of the problem is, is that people don't realize, I mean, you just sort of very quickly summarized 
the consequences of not get asking for help, right? The problem is people don't realize those consequences till often it's too late. No different than other aspects of your life, whether it's your health, it doesn't matter. Oftentimes by the time you realize why didn't I either learn, get knowledge or get help, why didn't I do it? Oftentimes by the time they realize it, they can't fix the problem, right? They can't solve it at that point. It's too late, which is why it's so frustrating, right? Why we get so frustrated because we see it. We've seen it. We've met a lot of people in these classes who come to us and say, why didn't I come to this class 10 years ago, right? Why didn't I, why didn't I, why wasn't I smart enough? It takes intelligence actually to ask for help. It takes, it takes a, a, a willingness to admit you, you don't know everything Paul, and you need to learn. I- you're 100% right. And here's the deal. So we have a firm, uh, a private firm, which we don't talk much about in our class. I mean, in, in this show, we don't talk about it in our class, at all, but we don't talk about it in this show. But we have a private firm that we're responsible for over $2 billion. A lot of people, we're almost like a family office, CPA, attorney, uh, wealth managers, taking care of people's retirement. That's all we do, about 1,000 people and The best thing we did as business owners was knowing our own weaknesses and hiring people that were smarter than us to improve what we were. That's when we saw our business expand and do its best and perform its best and be most effective is when we gave up some control and recognized we have limitations. We have blind spots and we... And so we all do, all of us, everyone that's listening, you have blind spots. And sometimes when you have success, you begin to think you are better or more effective than you really are. And I'll be honest with you, it is very, very prevalent with money. And it's not your own fault. It's because you've got people feeding you newsletters and experts telling you, you can do this. You can manage it. You can do this. Look. What will drive performance in retirement is not has nothing to do with what you invest in. But what drove performance to get you to this point and amass the wealth you have had something to do with what you invested in. But now it doesn't. It's all about income planning. When do I take income from which accounts during what market of events and what conditions to pay as little taxes as possible? Just attend one of the eight-hour classes. We're begging you, attend one of our eight-hour classes at most major universities in your area and also streaming it so you can stay in the comfort of your own home. All you have to do is go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we have plenty more straight ahead. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. Thanks for tuning in to the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak alongside financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They are with the Retirement Education Foundation. And of course, we know the foundation sponsors courses on retirement planning. Wherever you're listening today, we do have a spot for you to attend. These courses are taught at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campus. Also, Oakland University is a location, and our most recently added location is the University of Missouri, a one- or two-day course. It's your choice. Here's how you can get registered. Simply go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanning.edu edu.org. You can also pick up the phone and register that way, 800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981. We want you to register. So check out the website, find a date and location that works for you and make plans to attend. We want to get back to our program today. We're talking about the impact of not asking for help when you need it, specifically around retirement planning. And this show and many others in our library, you can find them wherever you find your favorite podcast. That's right. You can listen as a podcast, share it with a friend. We hope you'll do that. Just search for the Retirement Education Hour. All right. So Kirk and Paul, I want to get back to our topic at hand. There really is this fallacy out there that you can do your own retirement planning. And you see this with people all the time, right? This is, it's hard to tell people. I I mean, imagine you're an engineer. So we know who listens to the shows and we know who goes to the classes. Here are the people who come to our classes. They tend to be engineers, CEOs, CFOs, uh, CPAs, attorneys, doctors, 
highly educated, tend to be pretty good financially. They have pretty good financial literacy skills. They've saved well. They've invested. They perceive as well. I would say many of them got lucky with their investments just because we've had the greatest 10-year run we've had in the history of the stock market. At the same time, their compound interest was hitting full stride towards the end of their careers. But nonetheless, we've got successful people who have had success with their finances. They have one to 10, one to $20 million. And they're like, I, I know what I'm doing. I, I amassed this wealth. I, I know what I'm doing with my finances. And, and the problem is, is they're also re- that, that message is reinforced by the financial service industry telling you, oh, all you have to do is take out 4% a year withdrawals and you're going to be fine. Look, <laughs> You are aging. You're getting older. Cognitively, things are going to change. Your employers are going to tell you, you are too old to do your job anymore because there's people younger you that are more efficient, more capable, and able to do that job. But yet, you are going to take care of you and your spouse's wife as you're cognitively declining, aging, becoming more and more vulnerable and more and more confused. And we all know this to be true because we all have parents, grandparents. We've witnessed this. But again, not us. We don't think we're not going to be like that. We're smarter. We're different. Yet, No one can fight the age, Paul. It's, it's just the reality. Things are going. So set aside the strategies themselves. Just being able and capable of managing this effectively so that you can have freedom in retirement. That's a, that's a different ballgame, Paul. No, it is. And I, I actually like using the analogy of your health because, in, you know, we know people, our listeners know people, right, who, who choose not to go to the doctor because they, they know it all or because for whatever reason they think it will never happen to them. They're never going to be the ones getting sick. And one day you get sick and sometimes It's too late and you can't recover, right? Sometimes you have an illness, a disease, and because you didn't go to the doctor and get the help you needed, it's too late. That's no different than what we're talking about. It's no different. At some point, you make a mistake, you make a few mistakes, at some point, you're not going to recover and everybody assumes it's not going to be me. I'm not the, I won't make the mistake. I'm smart. I understand things. I'm cognitively intact. It will never be me. Sorry. It's all of us at some point. It's hard to face. No one likes to face it. As we age, we don't face it, but it's all of us at some point. And if you don't do it, at some point, the mistake is too big. You're never going to recover. And we, we sadly see this all the time, don't we? We do, Paul. I would say, though, it, just to be fair, with the, the, the demographics of the people who are listening to our shows and coming to our classes, they tend to have a considerably more amount of net worth than the average baby boomer. Now, they may not recognize that they have a lot more because people sometimes, they're, they're not aware that the average baby boomer is going to retire with two hundred or 250000 saved. That's all they have. 40% of baby boomers only have Social Security. And so when you have a million, two, five, seven, ten million, you're not average. You're not close to average. Now, I would say with that group of people, Paul, the people that won the $20 million, they don't tend to outlive their money. That isn't our fear for us because fear anxiety, it's its job. The anxiety is really there to protect you from those drastic mistakes, right? Now, the challenge is the anxiety of someone else not sending you a paycheck and you have to pay yourself during four, five, six major market events that you're going to be confronted with throughout your retirement. That's what, that is the statistic. You're going to be confronted with a lot of major market events when you're in your 60s, when you're in your 70s, when you're in 80s. What we know is you, that demographic with the wealth that have the education, you're going to not spend. You're going to shut down. Fear will beat you because of your fear of outliving your money. So when we say to you, don't, if you don't come to this class, the result is going to be you underspending what you otherwise should be spending working longer than you need to work, 
paying more taxes than you need to pay, spending less money than you can spend, and then having more fear throughout retirement every time there's a market event or you don't like an election, as you get older and more confused, you're going to shut down. So you can avoid this. All it takes is spend eight hours in a class. And you might not be able to build your own retirement plan, but you're certainly going to know the levers that's going to drive success. It's when you take income from which accounts at what age. That's what's going to drive success, not what you invest in. So please come to one of our courses held at just about all the major universities in your area. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, eight hours, 200 page textbook, Register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we're back with Kirk and Paul right after this. Stay with us. I'm here with financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. And you're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. We're glad you're with us today. Kirk and Paul, of course, are financial instructors. You'll meet them and several of the other instructors when you make plans to attend the courses sponsored by the Retirement Education Foundation. And no matter where you're listening to us today, we have a local location ready for you. In fact, you can find these courses hosted at at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi and Troy campuses, Oakland University, and recently added the University of Missouri. So make plans to attend, and you can do that by visiting the website. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800 240 89 81. This is not a brief overview. This is a one day or a two day course. It's your choice. It's a real deep dive into retirement planning. These are really almost like master's level courses on retirement planning. And we believe you deserve a great retirement. It starts with education. That's what these courses aim to do. So don't wait another moment. Register, reserve your seat today. Spots do fill up quickly. Go to retirement planning edu.org. On the show today, we've been talking about the danger and the impact of not asking for help when you need it. And most of us, if not all of us, do need help when it comes to planning for our retirement. So much has changed here in a modern retirement. It does take a lot of know-how, a lot of education, and we're exploring that today on the show. You can re-listen to this program or explore new topics, different topics in our library of shows anywhere you find your favorite podcasts. Just search for the Retirement Education Hour. We hope you'll do that today. Now, this fallacy that we have around people thinking that they can plan their own retirement, this also comes into play when we're talking about our investments. Explain that, Kirk and Paul. So let us be clear, when we talk about investments, we are not so first of all, when we're on this show, we are uh, behaving and representing the charity as a financial instructor. But in our private practices, we take a position when it comes to investing that nobody, not even ourselves, nobody, there isn't a professional out there that can stock pick or market time. That is our very strong belief and the data supports that belief. All the research search suggests doesn't suggest the research tells us no one has a special special algorithm no one has this inherent talent to be a better stock picker or a market timer over any extended period of time it does not work nothing beats the index over an extended period of time period full stop okay now i know that's not the value proposition that the financial service industry has promoted for years. They say they have something special and all your newsletters and the Motley fools and the Kramers who, you know, Kramers underperformed the S and P 500 by more than a hundred percent over the last 20 years are still out there promoting. They've got something you need or you can look, (laughs) no one has a special sauce when it comes to uh, investing. It doesn't exist. I I know that disappoints a lot of you who have been tinkering and doing this your life. You haven't beaten the S&P 500. If you put a million dollars in the S&P 500 20 years ago, it's over worth over five million dollars today. There's not going to be many of you that beat that. All right. Just that's the facts. Now, knowing that's our position, 
What does drive success in retirement is making sure you have a proper asset allocation. Now, everyone hears asset allocation. It's the same. No, we're talking about having different buckets of money at different phases of your retirement to be able to take your income from, and then always having a pivot account when we have that unexpected market event, because we don't know when that's going to be. So just think of it this way, Paul. If I know I don't have assets that I'm going to touch for at least 10, 15, 20 years, I should be 100% in equities. If I've got dollars I'm spending over the next three years, right now I should be in treasuries, maybe corporate ladder or a muni ladder, right? Do you follow? It is insane that today people are going to advisors or doing it themselves and they're building a 60-40 portfolio, 60 stocks, 40 bonds, and just pulling income from that. That's crazy. You run into sequence of returns risk, which we'll talk about next segment, but you're losing out on the real growth potential of 100% equities for dollars you're not touching, and then you're running the risk of outliving your money because you're pulling money from an account that's down. I know it sounds confusing, Paul, but I try to make it as simple as possible. Yeah, no, I, mean, I think I think you know the takeaway. Just be clear: is that you're not saying that investing is not important, right? You're not saying, of course, that right. You're not saying that I, we invest on a private practice a lot of money, right? Investing is hugely important, and, and in fact, what you're saying actually is if you, it's all about asset allocation. In the long run, if you allocate appropriately based on your distribution of when you take money out, in the long run, you actually do better. But it really is about asset allocation. And, and I think the problem is a lot of our listeners, in their mind, think that they've done amazing, right? They look at their accounts. They've grown a lot. They don't really look at how efficient they've been, but they, they, you know, the money's grown a lot. And they assume the same strategies they, that they used when they were working, they could continue using in retirement. And, and that's where it becomes problematic. So, Paul, when we teach in the class – different registration, depending on the tax registration, we're going to have different buckets of money depending on when we're going to spend those dollars. And we're going to be pivoting between accounts for tax efficiency. We're going to be pivoting between different accounts. See, we don't, you don't change your investments when there's a market event. You change where you take your income from when there's a market event. And this is where people, particularly in retirement, get themselves in a lot of trouble is they start chasing market performance and market events in, in managing their investments instead of managing their income sources, where they're pulling the income from. So if you do this effectively, and this is the reason why it's an eight hour class, what we teach is we teach around a plan that takes about 50, 60 hours to build. This is comprehensive. You've got one to 10 to $20 million dollars you got to map this out. Now, if you map it out effectively, Paul, you can take withdrawals of 6, 7, 8, 9% per year with a 0% chance of outliving your income if you do it properly. If you have different buckets set up for different market events and then pull the income from the right buckets, you got to come to one of the eight hour classes. We're teaching them at most of the major universities in your area. We're also streaming them live from your own home. Or you could just go to the website and check out what a real retirement plan looks like and you'll see what we're teaching in the class. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll return. There's more Retirement Education Hour straight ahead. We're glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. Great show today. We're talking today on the program about the impact of not asking for help when you need it. And I don't know about you, but when I think about retirement, I think about all of the pieces, parts, those things that you don't know that you don't know. There is an opportunity to get some help here. And there's also an impact if you don't ask. If you don't raise your hand and ask for help, there can be a really long-term detrimental impact to the quality and the health of your retirement. We want you to have the best retirement ever. And that starts with getting informed, getting educated. And the good news is I'm here with two financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. They're both with the Retirement Education Foundation. And the foundation's mission 
is to educate you around retirement planning. And wherever you're listening today, we have a local option for you to attend either in person. You can also attend virtually. These courses are designed to help you walk away with far more confidence than you currently have. So if you're thinking about retirement, we want you to get registered today. And keep in mind, these courses are taught at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both campuses, Novi and Troy, Oakland University as well. And we've recently added the University of Missouri. So we want you to get registered. You can do that at the website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Dot O-R-G. You can also call to get a front row seat, 800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981. And we do want to get back to our program. I want to make one note. If you heard anything today, you want to go back and listen. We make this easy for you. You can find this show and many, many others anywhere you find your favorite podcasts. Simply search for Retirement Education Hour. Now, Kirk and Paul, we were talking about you don't know what you don't know earlier. And boy, this is one of those things that I think falls into this category. I'm talking about sequence of returns risk. Let's start by defining it and explaining why so many people don't know what this is. So this is the number one risk to people's retirement. And it's what will drive performance and success in retirement. It is not what will not drive performance and success in retirement is what you invest in. That is not what's going to drive it. Inve- what you invest in will not drive it. It's the sequence of which you take withdrawals to live on, income from, during different market events. All right? It's called sequence of returns risk. Google it. Academia has been warning us for years about this. The financial service industry is just finally starting to talk a little bit about it. But this is the act of taking money out of an account when the account is down. So let's play along last year. Let's say your portfolio was down 25%. I think the statistic nationally, people's 401ks were down about 23%. Let's just pretend it was 25% your portfolio was down. And then you took another 5% to live on this year. You withdrew 5% out of your portfolio that was down 25%. Now you are 30% behind. Now, just to get back to break even, you're going to need almost 45% the following year to break even. But wait a second. The next year, you still need your 5% to live on. Oh, you're going to say, well, if the market's down, I won't take a withdrawal. Oh, 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 no, no, no. You don't have a choice. You have to take your 5% required minimum distributions out of your retirement accounts, whether it's up or down. So now you really needed 50% to break even the next year. You have zero chance of recovering. Now, this is going to be slow, methodical, eating away at your wealth. Before you know it, you will outlive your money because you had a bad sequence of events when you were withdrawing money out of your accounts. We break this down. Go to our website, retirementplanningedu.org. We've created a white paper on sequence of returns. We've created interactive calculators so you can put whatever returns you want in over a seven to 10 year period and see how, how successful or unsuccessful you are, depending on if you lose early versus middle, lose in the middle or lose late. This is a massive piece of the class is how do you construct a plan, a retirement income plan so that you have accounts that you can pivot to during the when we have unexpected market events, which you're going to have four to seven major market events throughout retirement. So you have to map this out and make sure you have accounts to pivot to. Paul, did I, did I get that okay? You did. In fact, I'm sitting here thinking, I mean, you, you explained it perfectly. And so I, I, the, the only thing I want to add, because I think you really nailed it. The only thing I want to add is, I know in the class, people sometimes will raise their hand and they'll say, okay, I get it, but... So, you know, when the market's down, you know, I'll just spend less. And you made the comment, sometimes you don't have a choice. If all your money's in IRAs, you have to take it. But here's the deal. Really, at the end of the day, so much of this is psychological. Because at the end of the day, how many of you listeners really want your retirement to look like the stock market? I mean, how many of you want to actually, when you're 70-something years old, not take that vacation because maybe you're going to run out of money because the market's down? How many of you want to do that? 
retirement is all about freedom, right? It's the freedom to live your life, spend as you want, because we don't know when tomorrow's, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow, right? It's all about the freedom to spend, regardless of who's the president, what's going on in the economy, what war are we fighting in, or what's happening in the stock market. It's about freedom. And really, sequence return will destroy your freedom if you don't plan for it. And Paul, this is why when we say you all need help, now, all of you, one to $20 million, no matter how much success you've had with your investing and finances, it, it's irrelevant. This is the first time you're ever going to be confronted with this phase of your life where you need to create your own income on an annual basis without having a paycheck coming to you every year. And so what drives success? And, and unfortunately, the financial service industry is not talking to you about this. They're not going to do this for you. They're going to give you a silly little software generated probability of success report that's 30 pages long. It's either eMoney or Money Guide Pro telling you to take out 4% a year. That is crazy. You don't have to limit yourself to 3 or 4% a year. You can actually have at your age of 60, 65, you can have 6, 7, 8, 9% withdrawal rates if you know how to manage sequence of returns risks and minimize taxes. And we teach you in the class, many of you are going to save hundreds of thousands of dollars in retirement from taxes alone. If you do this right and minimize, see, that's going to drive your performance is when you take income from which accounts at what age, that's what's going to drive it. So attend one of our eight hour classes. We teach it either a two evenings, four hours each evening, or one full Saturday teaching at most major universities in your area around the country. And it, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity to attend. If you'd like to register, go to retirement planning edu.org that's retirementplanningedu.org and we'll be back there's more with kirk and paul right after this this is the retirement education hour megan mosak alongside financial instructors kirk cassidy and dr paul mettler and we are so glad you've tuned in today to the program we're talking today about the danger and the impact of not asking for help when you need help, especially around retirement planning. Of course, that's what we focus here on the show uh, week in and week out. We talk about how to plan successfully for retirement, how to have the retirement you've always dreamed of having. We want you to be educated. And that's why the foundation sponsors these courses throughout the communities that we serve. And wherever you're listening today, we have a location you can attend and really, these are master's level like courses. They're designed to go deep into retirement planning and uh, the concepts around those. This is not a brief overview by any stretch of the imagination. And we want you to register. That will ensure that you reserve a spot so that you can have that education and get that confidence that you need to have that retirement that you want. The website to get registered is retirementplanningedu.org. Again, it's retirement planning edu.org and keep in mind that these courses are taught at the university of michigan eastern michigan university michigan state university novi and troy campuses oakland university or the university of missouri so make plans to attend you can go to the website find a date and location that works best for you you can also call with your questions and register 800-240-8981 81. And we'll get back to Kirk and Paul and the topic for today. I want to remind you, you can find this show and many others in our library anywhere you find your podcast. Simply search for Retirement Education Hour. You know, Kirk and Paul, I want to talk about something that's a bit sobering on this topic, and that is the idea that a lot of us ladies, we're going to outlive our spouses. That's what the stats say, right? So if we have, we're married to uh, someone who didn't do anything, didn't reach out and ask for the help that they knew they needed, how could that impact the surviving spouse? In many cases, the wife. Well, particularly with baby boomers, it is not uncommon where we have one spouse that's responsible for the finances. Um, that That's probably more typical than not. More typical than not, it's it has been uh, the 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 men in the marriage, and you know because of a, a number of reasons, which I, I, we talk about in the class, why you guys 
you know, you one to ten, one especially one to ten million. We find with people once they get to about t- seven to ten million, they recognize they need some help because they're it, it gets more much more complex, and they begin to recognize that. But that one to ten million dollar person, th- there's a lot of reasons why they tend to get stubborn and they don't seek help. And what we're asking here here is is forgetting getting help to take care of your finances, but get yourself educated so you know really true exposure to where the advantages and disadvantage disadvantages of effective planning for retirement. One of the biggest disadvantages is what will happen when you pass away to that surviving spouse. Now, the husband, if he's the do-it-yourselfer, He's got his list. He's got his spreadsheets. Some of you go over them with your your spouse once a month, once a couple times a year, and they're really not paying attention. Look, here's the reality. When you die and they're 80 or 83 years old, you're giving this responsibility to someone that hasn't looked at spreadsheets or handled finances in 40 plus years. You are being so selfish and unfair to them. And this is why we're seeing 36% of people over the age of 70 becoming victims of elder abuse, period. That's what happens. And those who are most likely to victimize the elderly is the family, unfortunately. 60% of the time, it's your family who's taking advantage of the surviving spouse. So do do this for your family. Do this for your spouse, you need help. You're going to need help as you age. Paul, I'm sorry. I, I, no, I, I no, didn't leave you in a great spot there, no, but I no, get so no, frustrated actually. because people are not me. I'll be around forever. I'll be fine. Right. Nothing's going to happen. I've taught them. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, no. In, in some ways, this is an overgeneralization, but in some ways, right at this moment, we're speaking to the men who are listening, right? Really, most of the time, there's exceptions, most for the most part, right now we're speaking to the men. And one of the things that, that I think about, Kirk, is, is how often I've sat down with a couple. And the husband's the one who has the spreadsheet. They're the ones who've been managing it. And, and I, you can see in the faces of their wives, they don't want to hurt their husband's feelings, right? They don't want to question or hurt their feelings. So they don't say anything, but you can see the trepidation in their eyes, in their face, because they're so afraid that without a plan, what's going to happen to them if their husband dies first, right? Yeah. They don't say anything, but they're scared, right? You guys, the men who are listening, we're talking to you. If you're married and you're the one who's doing this, you got to not just think about yourself. You got to think about your wife. What happens if you pass away first? What are you leaving her? If you want a plan, it's one thing, but you, we got to be careful not hurt your, your wife. And, and we see it. We, we meet people in classes all the time, widows whose husbands were managing it, and now they're trying to figure this out. And, 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 and sometimes, again, it's, it's too late. So anticipate this and do something about it now. Paul, I think, I think the assumption is that, you know, we've raised great children. The children will take care of, yes, right. you know, mom or dad when the first <laughs> right. one passes sure. away. And I, I'll tell you, uh, the majority of the time, that, that, that it doesn't work out so well. Look, they have their own lives. Uh, I know we have travel sports. We're gone. I've got an elder. We've got, Paul and I, we're brothers. I don't know if people realize that, but we are brothers, even though de- different last names. We're brothers, and we have the same mother. And we have an elderly mother who's very dependent on all uh, on us to take care of her. And it's, it's first of all, it's a huge burden. Second of all, it's very difficult. And, 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 and third, let me ask you, in your children's marriages, who is responsible for their finances? Because that is who's going to take care of mom or dad's finances when the first spouse dies. That's that's who's going to be in control of things. And this is where we see problems really pop up. Here, we're not asking you to go find someone to help you right now. We're not, we're, we're not even telling you you need to do it. We're telling you to get educated, go to an eight-hour course. For, and, and even if, if the excuse is to protect your spouse, the, the truth is it's really for you too because I, we're just telling you, you're going to underspend, pay more taxes, have more fear, and leave a spouse freaked out and more likely to get taken advantage of. T- attend an eight-hour course. That's all, we're, It's not that difficult. It's an advanced course, 200-page textbook. They're taught at all the major universities around you. 
You can stream it. You have no excuse. It's $29 donation to charity. You have no excuse not to attend. If you'd like to register or learn more about the courses, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Happy you've tuned in to the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, everyone. Megan Mozak alongside Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. They're both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And you can meet both Kirk and Paul and other financial instructors like them with the Retirement Education Foundation when you sign up to attend one of the foundation's retirement planning courses. And these are taught at local universities. We want you to be there. Go to retirementplanningedu.org to reserve your seat today. They're taught at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi and Troy campuses, Oakland University, and we've recently added the University of Missouri. So make plans to attend You can call 800-240-8981 or go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. And don't forget, you can listen to this show again. You can share it with a friend or a spouse. Simply find it wherever you find your podcasts. You can search for Retirement Education Hour. So Kirk and Paul, as we talk today about the impact of not asking for help when you need it, let's talk about how a plan can be a great antidote. Well, you know, I think most of our shows, we try to conclude the show with talking about what are we teaching in the class? Most importantly, and and this is what we're teaching in class, what does a real, comprehensive, 20, 30-year retirement plan look like in full? And one of the things between segments, you know, Paul and I were talking, and I was struggling trying to communicate this, and Paul Paul nailed it. Um, And so I'm going to try to reiterate what Paul was able to summarize a lot better than I could say in some of our earlier segments. Most of you, whether you're doing it this year, doing it yourself or going to your advisors or brokers, most of you will end up having a couple of accounts, one account for your IRAs, you'll have an account for your non IRAs. And then when you need income from those accounts to live on, you're going to pull from those accounts and live off them. Whether the market's up or down, it doesn't matter. The most effective way to build a retirement plan to drive success and performance. In other words, to give you the ability to withdraw greater than the 3 or 4% financial service industry has told you that's all you can have. If you really want to have 6, 7, 8, 9% withdrawal rates, you're going to have to have in your different uh, your IRA accounts and non-IRA accounts, you're going to need to have multiple accounts built around your income schedule. When do I need those dollars? That's going to drive the risk profile in those buckets of money. So you're going to have different buckets for different time horizons. But in addition, you have to have some pivot buckets, buckets of money that are not exposed to market volatility that when we have a market event, a major market event, which you're going to be confronted with three, four, five, six times, seven times throughout your 30 year retirement, they're going to happen. The only way to not be forced to change your spending patterns, you have to have a pivot account that you can pivot to, to pull from and suspend taking money from the accounts that are down in value, that are exposed to the volatility. So instead of trying to time your investments, you're timing your income distributions. Now, along with that in the class, Paul, we then break down when do I Roth convert? How do I, what tax bracket am I going to be in my 70s? What tax bracket am I in now? Where should I take my money from? When should I take my Social Security? Because Social Security impacts my taxation on dividends and capital gains and R&Ds. The goal, mapping out, the, and we teach this in the class, is to show you how to calculate what is my total tax liability is going to be over my lifetime. And then how can I work backwards and find a more efficient path to take my income to minimize my taxes. And if we do this properly, most of you that attend our class will save hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes by knowing where and when to take your money from and how. You know, as you're, as you're saying this, and I know, you know, this, we don't talk about our private practice because this is about a charity that sponsors a course, right? But, you know, as you're saying this, I was just thinking about someone that 
I had met with recently who probably his net worth was three or four million dollars working with one of the bigger brokerage firms out there and told them that their plan was to take 3% out over the rest of their life. That's insane. And by doing that, they would never outlive the money. Again, this is a private practice. We ended up doing a plan. If they would have taken 3% over their life, they would have left well over a million dollars, well uh, over a million dollars. Three or four million. Yep, to their ahead. children. And legacy wasn't important to them. Yep. Wasn't, they didn't want to leave anything. They were going to leave millions to their children, didn't want to, if they would have followed a simple 3% rule. And, and they asked, why did my advisor suggest that? Because it's easy. It, Paul, it's not only easy, but remember, the less you spend, people, the more your advisors in the financial service industry makes. Because they get to manage more of your money. Right. That's how they get paid. The less right. you spend, the more they make. Sorry, Paul. Go ahead. No, no. you know, it's, it's exa- This example is not unique, right, Kirk? I mean- most of you listeners who have advisors, that's what they're telling you. And as we say this all the time, most of you are going to end up leaving a lot of money to your children or whoever you're leaving money to and not fully enjoying your retirement. Key is, the key is planning, right? That's the key. And that's what we teach in the class. Paul, everyone listening today can go to our, the charity's website and they can see a sample plan where we have $2 million married couple, 65 years old, and they're going to take 8% a year, $160,000 a year with zero chance of outliving their income with long-term care protection, bulletproof plan, surviving spouses protected, and they're saving five over $500,000 in taxes the way this plan was built. That is the exact plan that we teach in the class and we walk people to do it so at home think to yourself if you're 60 years old you can have six seven if you're 65 years old you can have seven eight percent withdrawal rates just attend an eight hour class eight hours 200 page textbook all you have to do is make a 29 dollars donation to charity and you can attend one of our courses at most of the major universities in your area or stream it if you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Retirement Education Foundation is a fiscally sponsored program of United Charitable, a registered 501c3 public charity. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual's situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable. But accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is paid for by the Retirement Education Foundation.